We should also give an apology to our fans. Yeah, it's been two weeks. Yeah, what are we doing? Sorry, I had the not right now. G'day, welcome to an episode of Couch Creek. It's been a couple of weeks. No, yeah, you, but, you uh, had the coronavirus. No, you didn't have the coronavirus. <laughs> All clear, but... Uh, yeah, it's been busy the last couple of weeks. I've been on holidays too. So. And the A-League's on holidays as well, so there's it's not as much to talk about, but today, Bradley, we're going to be talking about W-League. Yep. Uh, maybe some expansion, yep. you know, rumours. Or the direction we'd like to see the W-League take in the next yeah. couple of years, especially considering we've got the Women's World Cup here, so... Yeah, let's uh, let's dive right in. What do you what do you reckon, Brad? What's, what's some things that you'd like to see the W-League do in the next couple of years? I think everyone wants to see it. They want to see a full round like a full home and away season so we've got nine teams at the moment so play 16 games they play 12 at the moment don't know why they can't play just another four rounds or something but i just want to see a proper home and away season and i don't know why they can't yep absolutely uh i think it's the same thing as you know the a league but we just if we want our women's national team to be competing at the top of the world we need to be given more minutes. The, yeah. At the moment, the A-League doesn't play enough rounds uh, yeah. and the W-League's the same. We just don't have enough football for players to come through, you know, for, for young players to get minutes, for older players to get, you know, fitness in their legs mm. uh, and and play themselves into form. Mm. You can't do that in a 12-round in a twelve round competition. No, and I don't know, would you like to see the W-League move to the winter? Because I think, to be frank, compared to the men's, the quality's just not there it's still quite semi-professional comp and so it is quite taxing playing in the middle of summer mm. for a professional let alone someone like us who's just completely amateur yeah and for the girls who are semi-professional as well i think one thing though is yeah how and, and this is what australian football really needs to figure out over the next couple of seasons men's and women's is uh how we actually work all the football together because at the moment for the girls who are good enough, they're overseas playing in Europe. Uh, and a lot of them actually just left recently too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but for those who aren't quite at that level, they play in the MPL competitions. And you've got yep. some decent teams in those uh, women's MPL yep. comps. Uh, and so striking that right balance, I think if it goes to winter, you know, it, it should go to winter. I think all of football should go yeah, to winter. Yep. We've talked about this before. But I think for the women's game, uh, that might be difficult just for a couple of years to separate those girls who play both NPL and A League or W League. Uh, you've got to then really set the lines, which means you kind of got to make it worth their while. It's got to be like a good semi professional or professional competition. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I don't think we can compete with. Yeah. We've never been able to compete with America, but now Europe and you know England yeah, are the money's really coming starting in to step it up. Yeah. Um, I think I those 11 principal th- documents that were yeah. revised that came out recently, they said they want to make the W League one of the top five women's leagues in the world. I don't know about you. I think that's quite ambitious and it's probably hard because, well, look at all the money that's in the US League, in England, in Europe. I just don't think we have the investment. Yeah, um, we're not getting the money in the, in the men's comp. Mm. Uh, the Women's World Cup is the one thing, and, and we, you know, we'll keep coming back to this. It's what everyone's coming back to at the moment. Yeah. And really, we need a legacy from this Women's World Cup, don't we? Because if it falls flat like the Asian Cup, like I don't see the money ever coming. Yeah. Uh, so a lot kind of hinges on that. We, we're starting to see some governments, you know, put some money towards football yeah. facilities for for men and for women. Uh, and so, if we can build that momentum into the W League, would be be interesting yeah we have heard that there are a few teams pushing to get forward in the w league interesting enough um i think the w league there was a guardian in the article the guardian last month saying that potential expansion and investment um no i'm just looking at my notes now it doesn't look pretty pretty weird i'm not looking at the camera but um any kind of potential expansion plans have been put on hold because of covid and everything, um, but I don't think it's stopped a few other teams putting their hands up. I think the Central Coast Mariners, they had a team in the first years of the W League. They want to come back, which is great to hear from the Mariners. And Wellington, mm. this, is a, this is an interesting one. They don't, they don't, I think because of how the A League will probably look like in the future, they have to be based in Sydney. I think they want to have a W League based, I think, in Wollongong, yeah, not in Sydney. Right. So, I don't know. That's a bit 
Mm. I don't know how that'll work. Yeah. Well, well I, I get in theory how it'll work, but it's just, just a bit weird. Yeah. Firstly, on that, the Mariners kind of side thing, I think that was part of the, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was part of this new uh, owner who seems um, to be the front runner to take over the Mariners. I think that was part of his plans is he wants to get a W League team up and running mm. with that. So that's, that's exciting. That's a promising sign from somebody who's looking to make that step in. I don't know if that's gone through yet or, or where that's at. With the Mariners, they're still being play- paying their players. Good on. Uh, Charlesworth is still trying to sell the club. Uh, and so I think it was that fella, he uh, owns part of Rayo Vallecano as well yeah, over in Spain. Right, yeah. um, a senior businessman, I think he is. Yeah, yeah. Like so, he, yeah, if he wants to go full in with the Mariners, keep them on the Central Coast, get a women's team, that's great. Um, with, the, with the New Zealand team, the Wellington team, mm. uh, I think that's an interesting one. Uh, Shim Spider and so much more they, they talked a little, yeah. little bit about it and obviously you know Spider was a little bit uh, hesitant just because obviously they're looking after their own selves you know Wellington because New Zealand are part of this World Cup as yep. well they've already qualified because we've yep. got it uh, and so obviously they want to build up their talent and put them into our competition yep. uh, some people don't like that New Zealand's part of the A-League and W-League uh, kind of conversation at all uh, it makes sense for New Zealand, and I think, yeah, it depends on you know how many years. But I think it's good for the competition. You know, uh, we've talked about this before. If you want an A League team, you probably should have a W League team as well. Like, yeah. you should be a whole football should club. Should buy in. Yeah, basically, I think. But. So if Wellington are going to stay in the A League, I think having a W League team based out of Wollongong, you know, might give the chance for some uh, Australians to get in there. But I think it's going to be mainly Kiwis. Mm. But good on them because. New Zealand are actually starting to to grow their women's football as well. They yep. they've always been a decent nation uh, yep. in the women's game, and and they're starting to have players go over to Europe as well. So mm. for them to grow their own football in kind of culture in the women's game is good. And I think you know for Australia and New Zealand to partner in that together to grow football in the region, that's that's good. No, no matter mm. kind of what. Yeah. What I what I would like going forward, if we continue with A-League expansion, is to allow um, or require new teams that go into the A-League also have a W-League team. So like Western United, MacArthur. Yep. I think those are perfect examples. That Melbourne and Sydney are our two biggest cities, so the majority of players will either come from there or they'll gladly move there to play um, at an elite level. Yep. So having a third option uh, for those big cities, I think... Um, is a must, and I think it'd be a great opportunity because I think the more teams you have in both the A League and the W League opens up mm. more opportunities, and because there's so many more women, our top women have left Australia or the US to actually go to Europe, so yep. there's a lot more opportunities already um, for our local girls, but yeah, also yeah. for the ones coming up as well. If they're playing a full competition, like imagine if Western actually got a team in, if MacArthur came in with a team, yeah. you get Wellington Central Coast back in, you've got a you know, 12. a twelve team competition. Yeah. And they're playing, you know, twenty two rounds at least. Yeah. And these younger girls and, and the ones who aren't quite ready for that step are playing a proper competitive competition with a couple of overseas players chucked in. Yeah. That's gonna be great for the Matildas going forward. And that's it, it's always been the way. We don't give young players enough chance in competitive uh, games to make our nation competitive. Mm. Uh, it's always been a problem for the Socceroos, you know, where the young guys get in the minutes. And so if we want a strong future, if we really want to be one of those top five yeah. women's teams for the you know foreseeable future, giving young girls the opportunity to play in a proper competitive competition has to be the way to go. Mm. I did hear, I think, on the Principles 11, because they discussed in Shim Spider as well, um, was about establishing a women's FFA Cup as well, mm, yeah. um, which is exciting. I'm, I'm all keen for that. I think promotion and relegation is a... Quite a while off for our women's, um, I think. Absolutely, but 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 I, I think we should. Um, yeah, I, I definitely I'm on board with that. an FFA Cup for the women's. I think it was great. part of the conversation though that the AAFC, the you know the championship, yeah. uh, they they want women's to kind of be. Yeah, a, yeah, and I'd like that too. That. But I think I yeah. think that might be a bit of a stretch right now. Yep. Um, but definitely in the future, maybe twenty years down the track. I don't know how long down the track. I th- I'm I'm keen for it, but. I think it, the, the talks for a second division is much more advanced for the men's and, and much more realistic than the women's right now. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to see it happen in the men's before, I think, thinking about it in mm. the women's. But, yeah, I think, you know, the NPL 
you can watch the games on MPL TV. Yep. Uh, there was a cracker of a Rabona goal actually scored on the weekend in the. Is that a night game? Yeah, in the women's New South Wales MPL. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can find a clip of that and just put we'll, that we'll, in. We'll find it. It's a banging goal, but um, yeah, th- there's definitely quality in Australia. It's exciting to see some of the women doing really well overseas. Like uh, Hayley Razzo with her Everton yeah. team getting yeah. into the, the final of the FA Cup. Yeah. Caitlin Ford has scored some goals for Arsenal. Yep. Chelsea, uh, yeah, Sam, Sam Kerr, Kerr, Chelsea Sam Kerr's is... only scored two, but Chelsea scored a heavy... I don't know. I, I don't think she's found her feet. Just I think she's been Chelsea. found she's out struggling. a little bit. I think she's been found yeah. out a little bit. Her, her FIFA rating might go down for next year's game. Yeah, it might only be 94. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, we've got the talent there. Uh, as we build towards this Women's World Cup, yep. we can get some, you know, some nice stadiums built, a bit of a legacy promotion relegation, the men's and women's game helping each other to build. Yep. Uh, yeah, we could be onto something really great in Australia, if it happens. I think these are some good steps. Yep, good. No, that's good. Get us there. That's good. I think that's a good chat. Yeah. I think we'll leave it there. So, yeah, thanks for joining us again. Um, we're still committed to doing videos through, throughout the off-season. We can't guarantee if we'll be back next Friday, but... Actually, yeah, let's commit to next Friday. Yeah, let's do it. We'll brainstorm some things to talk about. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it. Share the video on Facebook, Twitter, to your grandma, to whoever. Um, just, um, yeah, just thanks thanks for watching and get around the comments and just let us know what you think about the, the W League and what direction it should take with expansion. Well, guess I later. See ya.